He is a nationally recognized social media expert. He has written three best-selling books and been featured on CBS Money Watch, the Los Angeles Times, the Boston Globe, and the Miami Herald, just to name a few. He has been interviewed about Facebook's recent privacy changes for children on Channel 4, WIVB, WBEN, the Buffalo News, and the biggest morning talk sh radio show in New York City. Seth will be sharing his secrets for keeping your children safe on social media, how to protect them from predators and from themselves. Because 69% of teens regularly receive online communications from strangers and don't tell a parent. He will also share the 12 Facebook photos your kids need to delete before applying to college and how to make sure your child's Facebook posts don't cost them their ch college admission or their financial aid. Seth is also the developer of the most effective social media monitoring, monitoring application for parents, and he will be giving away free copies today to all of you for attending. And Seth can be reached at ultimatemarketingmagician.com. Thank you so much, Seth. Thank you. So we are here to talk about keeping our kids safe on social media. So are they safe? Spoiler alert, the answer is no. Um, as Joanne said, 69% of kids are receiving communications from adults they don't know and not telling you. So you may think your kids are safe, and you may think your kids are telling you everything, but statistically that's impossible, they're not. 46% um, of 10 to 17 year olds give out their personal information to adults they don't know. So why on earth would, who would be contacting them that they don't know that you would want them talking to? Nobody. And why would they be asking for personal information? Like, where do you live? How old are you? Where do you go to school? I have three kids. It's, they're not old enough yet for this, but it scares the something out of me. Um, in convictions, when a child, a pedophile, a perpetrator is convicted of abduction or abuse um, of children that they're not related to, so this is not a late night sneaky uncle, this is a stranger, 26% of them confessed that they found the kids based on what they said on social media. 86% 86, 86 of girls are conducting online chats without their parents knowing. And 26% of online predators use the victim social networking site. One of the things that is, there was an app that was developed called Snapchat. You do not want your kids to have Snapchat. So Snapchat was originally developed to get around people who didn't have, so if you don't have an unlimited text and picture messaging plan, you get charged for how many text and picture messages you send. So Snapchat was an app that allowed you to send text and picture messages without getting charged. But in order to pull it off, they made it so that your text or picture would disappear after two minutes. So there's no evidence of it. Which is very scary because now your kids can send stuff that you can't see. So if they have Snapchat, please delete it. And don't let them get it. I have, my best friend is in Egypt right now and is using Snapchat to send me pictures because he doesn't have international roaming and can't accept texts. So he's communicating with me via Snapchat, but which it had, that has a legitimate purpose. He's not paying for it. But he could also be talking to my kids without me knowing it if they had Snapchat. <laughs> um, so what do the most, what does your kid's Facebook or link or Twitter or social media profile contain? At the very least, what I can get from them, if I were trying to find out information about your kids, is how old they are, any pictures they post, um, where they live, what school they go to, every video they post. Um, when you sign up for Facebook, you punch in a cell phone number, and I can see wherever they go. If your, your phone or your kid's phone doesn't have the geolocation settings turned off, I can literally get the latitude and longitude of everything whenever they post, wherever they post. So I can literally get, you post a picture, I can see the exact place it was taken. And if my kid says, just got to pizza plant, geez, I could be there in 10 minutes and say, 
hey, Bobby, I know your parents, Jane and Steve, and they, because I can now pretend to be someone's best friend. Um, one of the things you need to do is do your homework. Google your children. But don't just Google your children, put their name in quotes. Quotation mark, Seth Green, quotation mark. The other thing you need to do is Google their email address in quotes. Because when they created their so social media profiles, they signed up with an email address. So if you Google their email address, you will pull up social media profiles of them that you don't know they have. Sometimes there are social media profiles they don't know they have. So they could tell you they told you everything and be telling you the truth and not realize they have profiles that they don't even know about. Because there are, not face, Facebook doesn't do this, but there are smaller social networks that literally will crawl the web for email addresses and create profiles for them. So they can say they have more users, even though it's never been activated and no one's ever posted anything. But they can also set it so it pulls data from Facebook or Twitter and posts it to their network. You could have social media profiles you don't know about. I'm sorry? What do the quotation marks do? Oh, the quotation marks make it so that exact phrase is what Google pulls up. So it gets rid of anything extemporaneous. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you Google Seth Green, there is also a famous movie star with the same name. So if you type in Seth Green, even if you spell it right and put the E on the end of my name, the first thing that will come up, Google will default to Seth Green without an E, because there are more searches for him than there are for me. <laughs> and it's for now. And then it will show you his pages. Underneath it will say, did you mean Seth Green with the E? So if you put quotes around it, you eliminate what could be wrong information. Or someone else, yes? You said something about if your geolocation is not shut off. Correct. Okay. What if you have that on so that you can track, you can see where your child is? You know, what if you have that, <coughs> right. some kind of tracking on so that I can see if my son is at his middle school? Or Correct. Not? The plus side is you're being a responsible parent, right. and you can see if he's telling you the truth and is where he's supposed to be. Right. The downside is so can I, okay. or someone who is more nefarious and right. right. Yes. Okay. So it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. If you can monitor them, so can someone else. Is Facebook really your friend? Um, do a search <laughs> on Facebook for your kids. Um, check their privacy settings. So Facebook, I've been, as Joanne mentioned in the introduction, I've been interviewed a whole bunch of times recently because Facebook just changed their privacy settings for children. It used to be that the only people who could see their posts, videos, pictures, um, were their friends, or people who they had accepted a friend request from. Now, Facebook has changed the default that anyone can see it. So, if you used to look at them on Facebook, it might say, um, Rebecca only shares information with people she knows. And I had to friend her and she had to accept it in order for me to see stuff on her wall. That is gone. Now, I can see anything she does if I'm not her friend. So, why would they do that? Why would they make it so a predator could see anything about your kid without having to friend them. Well, Facebook isn't a social network. Facebook is an ad agency. The only way Facebook makes money is by selling advertising. So, who would want more information? People who market to kids. So they did it to make more money. Because if I can advertise for Papa John's or Hot Topic or whoever to more kids, then Facebook gets more advertising revenue. So you, you can change it back to the old way, but you have to go in and change your privacy settings. Because the default now, they changed every child's to will allow anyone to see anything. You can change it. If, the kid, if your kid had the right privacy settings, they don't anymore. They changed it for everybody wholesale, and you have to go back in and refix it. To what? What did you fix it to? Um, so that private, so that only their friends can see it. You can sign in as them and delete things. So there are things that shouldn't be posted, that aren't appropriate, 
Um, there are pictures that shouldn't be there, we'll talk about, that are affecting your kids' chances at college and future employment. Um, the labor laws are still being written on social media right now. I was at a labor law for social media conference and technically employers aren't supposed to be looking at someone's social media when they apply for a job. Technically, depending on how the law ends up being written, I could be sued for discrimination if I didn't hire you because there was a picture of you being drunk and stupid the night before. But most employers don't know this and the laws aren't written yet, so we're all searching. Every job application that comes through, we're looking on social media to see what beyond what's not on the resume. So think about, would you want a future employer to see this? Um, you'll see later over 36% of college applications are being denied because of what they're finding on the kid's social media profile. So would you want a college admissions officer to see it? Would you want your grandmother to see it? It's probably the bubby proof. If it's bubby proof, you're probably safe. The questions I get asked all the time is, well, I tried to talk to my kids about this and they told me I was invading their privacy. I don't want to invade their privacy. Right. I'm getting there. Yes. It's not about their privacy anymore. It's about their safety. And would you rather have your child be your best friend and like you, but get abducted or be pissed at you, but be safe? I'm going with the, you can be mad at me, but I'll keep you safe and in one piece. When we get to our late 20s and early 30s, we realize how smart you really were. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And it's just, it's infuriating sometimes. Yes, I'm not an attorney, but I do have to tell you, I do believe that strangling someone is still illegal. <laughs> so I would not recommend that. Um, you should friend your kids, obviously, on, if they're on Facebook, if they're on. You can't use, I hear lots of parents who will give me the excuse that, well, I'm not computer savvy. I'm not tech savvy. You have to be. <laughs> Read a book, watch a YouTube video, do what my five-year-old does. Anytime she wants to figure something out, she watches a YouTube video and learns how to do it. Our sliding door wasn't working the other day and I was very frustrated and my wife was very frustrated and she said, well, just fix it. And I said, first of all, you know who you married, I can fix a computer, that's what I fix. Um, but I said, you know what? And Max says to me, my seven-year-old says to me from the other room, Danny, just go to YouTube. While she was upstairs, and I said, that's a really good idea. And I went to YouTube and found 12 videos on how to fix a sliding door. I still couldn't fix it, but I found the videos on how to fix it. Uh, Cyberbullying is another huge issue. Half, 50% of young people are, have been bullied online. This is really scary because it's so much easier to bully someone online than it is to face to face. There are also kids who are way too smart and mean and create fake social media profiles to annoy other people. Um, I know there's one of our favorite shows is called The Trophy Wife. And there was an episode a few weeks ago where the mom created a fake social media profile of an attractive teenage girl who went to a different high school who friended her kids and was talking to her kids and her da teenage daughter told the fake girl Oh, I'm going to a party, want to come to this party with me tonight, and told mom she was going to study at the library. 
And that's how the mom caught her. I don't suggest you go that far, but I could certainly see why you would. Um, there are different types of cyberbullying. It's not physical anymore. You don't have to push someone down on the playground for it to dramatically affect them. Um, there's emotional bullying. There is, your, depending on how old they are, they may be sexting. They may be taking photos of themselves they shouldn't have. And the thing is, they think, oh, if I send a direct message on Facebook, it's safe. It's not. Facebook is an ad agency. They make money by selling advertising. The more data they have, the more the ads they can sell and the higher they can charge for those. So everything your kids do is a part, there's a, it's funny, I never believed when I was a kid and I would get in trouble in school and this is going on your permanent record. And say, there's no permanent record. I don't, when I'm 74, no one's gonna pull it out and say, you did this when you were 12. Um, social media is now a permanent record. And because its sole purpose is not to connect people, its sole purpose is to make the company money, they will do whatever they can get away with to make more money. Um, people are spreading rumors via social media. Um, they are harassing kids. Um, you could have, and this is very scary to me, but I have two daughters, and one day they're going to be you know, in their 30s and I might let them date. And, <laughs> but they could have boyfriends who break up goes bad, and all of a sudden it's, you better give me money or do X, or I'm going to post on Facebook that you did X, Y, and Z. Um, so you have to be aware of this stuff, that it's out there. Um, you have to teach them the consequences, that it's not just about, oh, well, Susie won't think I'm cool. It's, this could affect you getting into college, this could affect you getting a job, and this could affect the rest of your life. Um, God help you if your kids ever want to run for political office. I mean, now, I don't, you got people taking pictures of themselves where they shouldn't be, and all of a sudden it's all over the media. I mean, you basically have to be completely perfect and not ever say anything wrong to anybody because someone will find it and repost it. Um, one of the things that I learned from my wife who's a social worker is we keep our computer in the kitchen. There's a little desk in our kitchen. It's in a public place. So we can see what they're doing all the time. Now, of course, that does not solve the issue of these things. <laughs> because they can go do this and I can't necessarily sit there every second of the day and watch what they're doing. We had a couple issues with this, like in the last week in my house. My son is obsessed, seven-year-old, obsessed with Minecraft, this game. And he's watching YouTube videos on Minecraft, on learning how to build things. But the problem is that some of those videos are shot by adults of themselves playing the game. And the language isn't always necessarily appropriate that they say when they're trying to build something and it doesn't go so well. So I will hear something and say, that video is not appropriate, go find another one. Because I can't set a child protection setting to avoid all Minecraft videos because it's not a separate category. Like you can set a privacy uh, child protection setting and say, don't let them watch adult videos. Don't let them watch violence. But a video game tutorial doesn't count as any of those. I, I, I had, this was actually more scary to me the other day. Um, my son was watching, again, YouTube videos and on his iPad, on our iPad, and he comes up to me a little bit later and he says, Daddy, what's Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> my stomach dropped. I tried, I turned, I'm sure I turned white. I tried to keep a straight face and I said, why are you asking, honey? He said, well, Daddy, I know you told me not to click on those ads in front of the YouTube videos, but I accidentally did one and it took me to this thing about this Fifty Shades of Grey and there were this man and this woman on this video and I said, oh my God. <laughs> You can skip the ad after the first five seconds because YouTube is not a video network. It's not a social network. It's an ad agency. The only way they make money is if someone clicks on the little ad before the video you're trying to watch. So be careful what they click on. Yes? YouTube is my worst nightmare right now. Yes. Um, and I wanted to ask, is there any way you were just saying that you can put filters? Can yes. Can you put filters on YouTube? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you go into settings, there's a menu on the left-hand side, and you can go, it will protect you somewhat, like you can protect against violence, drugs, porn, and adult entertainment, but you can't, 
protect against everything that doesn't go into that category. That's the problem. Like my, my daughter was watching American Girl doll videos the other day, and some of the videos are other kids playing with their dolls. Well, sometimes those other kids' parents aren't as good as ours, and those other kids have mouths that they are... Or maybe they're acting out what their parents are doing at home, I'm not sure. But I said, that doll should not be saying those words. We found things on YouTube that were shocking. Um, so you know, my son discovered this, and he was like, oh, he's 10. And we're, now we're searching for it. Because, yes. You know, it used to be kids were stealing Playboy magazines and whatnot, but now it's, it's a lot easier. Because it's right there. Um, so. And YouTube yeah. technically has settings that you're not allowed to upload that stuff, but if you just label it differently, I mean, there is more content created on YouTube in one month than all three TV, ABC, NBC, and CBS created in the last 50 years combined. They can't search it all. They couldn't hire, you'd have to hire every person on the planet to go watch videos to screen them. They can't. I mean, we, we just example Wonder Woman. You look that up, yeah. what do you get? <laughs> Some things that are not the cartoon. Right, exactly. Uh, uh, I found with YouTube, unless you're looking for something very specific, it's very... Well, you also get the other, you, the other side of that issue is that the, depending on what, whoever uploaded the video, what setting they checked, at the end of the video, YouTube will either, the screen just goes, excuse me, goes blank, or nine times out of 10, they didn't check the setting and YouTube will show related videos. And there's now a tile of like nine or 12 videos telling them to click on them. Because right. if they click, it's ad revenue for YouTube because I paid you to get someone to watch my video. The problem with related videos is some of them don't seem so related to me. We had um, a client at my marketing firm who coaches artists. He teaches artists how not to starve and charges them money to learn how not to start. Um, and he's national. And he called me one day very upset because he watched one of his own videos that we had created for him on his YouTube channel and one of the wrong setting box got checked. And he called going, why is there porn after my video? And they said, there isn't, there's no way. And he said, go look at it and watch it till the end. And it wasn't porn, but because, it was, because the video was about art, YouTube has very broad definition of what art is. So some of the videos it was suggesting that were related to art were of art of naked women. Now granted, it might be a Michelangelo sculpture of one, but I still don't necessarily want my five-year-old saying, how come mom, somebody has those and not, or whatever. I don't want to answer that question yet. If this stuff happens, you've got to, so some of it like that, other than good monitoring, you can't really avoid it because YouTube is going to show whatever they're going to show. Um, but you can tell other parents. We're, we have to be each other's friend and say, hey, my kid was looking at this and this showed up, so you need to watch out for it. Because they are not going to police themselves. They're too busy printing money. I went to, when we first got a Kindle, and I loaded up a little bunch of books for my daughter, who's 13 now. She was nine when we got it. And I figured I'm going to start with three, but I think all the classics are going to be on there. So they are. Which all is true, yep. Pound of the Baskervilles and War and Beast. Sherlock and, Holmes yep. and Alice in Wonderland are all on there. And I'm scrolling, da 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 da. And all of these XXX books are coming up. Well, Triple X books are coming up as free. And I'm like, holy crap. I'm glad I just didn't say to Sid, go, you know, find some free books that you want to put on your Kindle. All of these. And I mean, it wasn't like they were all the way down. It was, you know, they were in the search. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, YouTube, by the way, is Google. So you can associate... Right, Google. Google. Well, that's the reason why Google bought YouTube, is Google is, at the moment, still the number one search engine in the world. YouTube is number two. YouTube gets more searches than Bing and Yahoo and MSN combined. Because you're not searching anymore for a site, you're searching for a video. So Which is if you why. Go to settings on Google. Will that carry over to YouTube? No, you've got you've got to do them separate. Okay. Because you might not always be signed into your Google account when you go to YouTube. But so you have to do that on every device, or is it? Yes. Like, yeah, oh. So, for example, my wife doesn't have a Google account. So when the kids are searching YouTube either on her phone 
or on our desktop computer, and I'm not have not signed into my Google account, they're just searching as a hypothetically anonymous person, there are no settings. It's only if you actually sign in that the settings show up. So if they know to click sign you out, because they're deliberately trying to look for something they shouldn't, or if you just, it, got, it times you out because no one touched the computer in two hours and then Bobby goes on it. So you can't set privacy settings if you're not signed in. So well, you, you can set, right, you have to sign in to set, because otherwise they don't know who they are, who you are. So if my daughter has a Kindle, she can go to Google, but unless it's signed in as me, there's Correct. no privacy. Correct. Correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of work. So every time yes. she goes on um, something, she has to be signed in as me. Yes. Which is not likely. Right. Hence the monitoring and the talking to your kids. But can't she, and, set, but can't she set her daughter's account to certain privacy settings? Yes. You can set her settings. You can set her settings so she doesn't have to sign in as you. Yes. Kindle is tough. It's not a device yeah. I know that much about, and each of my kids now has one. They can do everything on it. And they can do everything on it. It's the same thing as an iPhone. No, this is the whole thing. No, no, not the app. It's the, it's the same thing as an iPad. It's the same thing as an iPad. Yeah, exactly. So if, if one of them is signed in, I can change their privacy settings. Yes. Okay. I mean, not privacy settings. They're but depending on yes. how old they yes. are, they know how to change them. To the yeah. Way. Well, you also have to t educate your children that they don't need, don't want to go back I think, and I think undermine you because they, you're trying to get, they want to be safe. I think that's the biggest point of all this, is you can drive yourself crazy also trying true. to protect them by not letting them know what's out there. Which eventually won't work. Which doesn't work as they get just older. Their and I think the biggest thing, just like in every generation, there are new things that are that are out there and different to parents that we just need, not just, we need to educate and really keep those lines of communication open yes. and scare them with the stories that are real and let them yes. see what's happening in the news and what happened to their friend at school and just everything you need to educate and you know there were stalkers when we were kids and our parents told us you don't talk to the strangers and if anybody comes up to you and no matter who they are even if you know them you don't go with them unless i told you to same messages right the issue now is it's much easier it's i wouldn't i'm guessing it's much easier to be a predator or a pedophile now mm -hmm. because everything is so out in the open and public there's an app that will tell you, so let's say it's also much less threatening as a child if someone friends me on Facebook and I just have my setting is auto accept everybody's friend request, or I just say accept to everybody, it's much easier than if you came up and offered me candy. Because then I could say, oh, my mommy told me about this is bad. But if you haven't said, don't accept friend requests from people you don't know. But again, it's your education. This right. is not how you, together you set those privacy settings. Right. This is why I'm saying yes. this way. And look, my Facebook is set the same way. Right. There is a very scary app that <laughs> will tell you if I get within X number of feet of someone that I'm friends with on Facebook. So for example, I could be at a bar, I could have it go off and say, oh, um, let's pretend I don't know Rabbi Alex. Hey, Rabbi Alex is in the same, same building as you. And it'll show me his profile and I could go walk up and pretend to be his best friend and go, oh my God, we met three years ago at Chabad and when you spoke and hey, how's the Shira doing? And I know his kids, I know everything. And he'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I forgot, of course. <laughs> And he wouldn't know. <laughs> that is a crazy app. It also is. Also, a pedophile could use that. Yeah. Yes. But theoretically, you should be friends on Facebook for that to work, right? Well, you have, right. They, you have, right. So your kids really need to not accept friend requests from people they right. don't know, and especially from adults. Right. Is it, isn't there an age limit on Facebook? You can't really okay, technically, it. there is. How, however, people sometimes don't put in the right birthday, accidentally or on purpose. For example, I've experienced this in my own family. I have a cousin who was on Facebook at nine and was posting on her parents' wall. So obviously I'm assuming her parents knew and just were okay with it. But at nine, she was liking our posts, she was commenting on our pictures, and wait a second, technically she couldn't join Facebook yet. 
she obviously had to lie about her birthday to get on, and her parents either didn't know that she sh technically can't be on Facebook or don't care. Thirteen. I think Instagram is more of a popular. I mean, my all my nieces and all my babysitters. I mean, Facebook is very passe, and your parents use it, and you know, like. My daughter knows people that do Instagram. Her yeah. cousins all do Instagram. That's how they communicate with each other. So right. I don't know if that's a similar... Oh, face, that's why Facebook bought Instagram. Oh, Facebook owns Instagram. So Facebook is desperately... Well, okay, so they went public and became a stock. And their stock didn't do so well. So they changed their privacy settings to make more money. They bought Instagram and they just bought another company to make more money. Because the kids are realizing that parents are using Facebook and are going to watch them. So the kids who hypothetically are trying to stay one step ahead of you are all on the next social network that's an ad agency and are trying, and so Facebook keeps buying them in a desperate attempt to stay as relevant with the youngest crowd. The fastest growing age group on Facebook is... 45 to 54. So... Which is young here in Buffalo. Which is young in Buffalo. <laughs> Spoken like a rabbi. It's true. For the way they are demographic, that's a young crowd. But fastest growing on Facebook is 45 to 54. And what are you doing? Watching your kids. You're watching your kids. Yes. I just wanted to ask as well. I got an email the other day that parents should start watching their kids playing on their games, on their apps, through however they get an app that. A mother was watching her child play a game the other day, and she was sitting next to her, and the game itself, the character, started asking her questions. <gasps> who are you with? Oh, oh who is, is that? Is your brother home? Is this one there? And apparently, someone could see right through the camera, um, through the app. Is that a yep. cat? Is that a yes, cat? Yes, it was yeah, a cat, cat game of some kind, yeah. and I wanted to ask, what the heck is that? Like, how do we... What is this? It's it's an actual game. No, what's the game? Uh, it was some it's kind of cat, cat game or something. So but I'm thinking if they can do it through that game, yeah. they can do right, it through any game. they're talking to a cat that's interacting with them. So for them, that's getting... not a stranger. That's not scary. It's a game. They don't even realize they're giving out personal information to a person because it's just a game. Right. So. And behind that game lies people who shouldn't have that information. Right. And, and the game, and she knew, the mother knew, the, the mother knew that she had already talked to this yeah. person because they knew about the brother, and the brother wasn't even sitting there. Right. So she had already played the game and talked about the brother. It's like a grooming. Yes. It was, it was terrifying to me to read that, so I had to have a conversation with yes. him about do not give games your personal information. It sounded crazy to me, but I had to have that conversation. Yes. So you've got to... Um, if you've got kids who are, it actually doesn't matter how old they are, but especially pre-college, um, you've got to protect their reputation. Um, we ha I have a friend who was applying for a job and deliberately deleted her Facebook, pro completely deleted her Facebook profile until after they let her know whether she got it or not, and then put herself back on Facebook because she was... She's like, I think I behave well on Facebook, but God knows what's up there. I've been on there for years. I don't remember everything, but everything is permanent. So before you send in college applications, um, go through their Facebook and say, we're deleting these pictures, we're taking down these posts, we're changing our privacy settings, because the college, app the college admissions officer technically shouldn't by default be able to see everything. That's a stranger. And do you want them seeing everything your kid posts? We would hope that everything is kosher, but it isn't always. Is that a question? Yeah, you can just raise your hand. Um, you also have to check the old sites they might have been on. For example, MySpace. Everybody remember MySpace? Um, I don't think any of our kids do. Yeah. Right, my seven-year-old doesn't know what that is, but if I had a 14-year-old, he might. And the sites that have... Um, where there are social networks that are smaller, that you don't know exist. There's a niche social network for almost every ethnic group. There's niche social networks for Jews. There's niche social networks for topics. Like there might be a specific social network 
based only around people who care about cats. So it's not just the 800 pound gorillas of Facebook and YouTube, but that's why you've got to Google search them in quotes and look for what else is out there that they don't even know still exists. What about what do we with quotes? Ah, so if you put quotes around your kid's name, you will only come up with stuff that has their name spelled that way in it. You won't get every result. So if you search Seth Green without the quotes, you'll get the movie star first. And it will say below that, because there's so many searches for me now, do you want Seth Green with the E on it? If you just put quotes, you'll get rid of all the other people who have the same name as me, you'll get rid of all the other junk. If you don't put quotes, I understand you're going to get everything under Seth. Yeah, the word Seth S that appears in anything, in any green that appears anywhere. Right, quotes is that exact phrase the way it shows up. Um, they're called Boolean search connectors, which is more information than you need to know, but there are a whole lot of different symbols you can put in a Google search to get very specific information. So I can say, give me everything about Aiden that doesn't include any mention of Temple. Give me everything about Aiden that includes every mention of middle school. Or whatever. Advanced search, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, you've got to have ground rules with your kids, what they are and aren't allowed to do, and you've got to explain it's about, it's about safety. And I agree with what you said, scare the crap out of them so that they go along with it, because I'd rather them be scared and compliant than brave and dead. Um, there, make sure you remember um, change. So we talked about the pro and the con of the geolocation settings on your phone. Pro being if I have an app or a program, I can see where my kids physically are. Con being so can somebody else. So you've got to decide which one is more important to you. The other thing is the settings on your phone. You may want to change them as well. So for example, if you have uh, an app from Groupon or Amazon Local or Buffalo Chicken or Buff Local Deals, it's actually, there's a Buffalo app called Buffalo Chicken. Um, it's not about chicken, it's about deals. It's just called Daily Chicken or something because it's Buffalo, I guess. So all of those apps send you offers based on where you are. So Groupon sends you the deal of the day for Williamsville. So if you turn off your geolocation settings, you can't do that anymore. But then again, no one can see where you are. Yeah, I mean, there was two girls, a 13-year-old, I think, they got caught in the silo downtown. They would do it to die. So they had a phone and that... Right, so it can save you, but it can also, someone else could find you too. So again, it's a toss-up between which is more important to you. Yes? So... Does everybody, I'm sorry to interrupt, hold that question That's one second. Does everybody here know how to change the geolocation settings on your phone? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take your question and then we can do that and you can decide if we want to change it later. With the Googling of names and stuff, I mean, our names are not, or your kids' names are not necessarily, probably not, the only person that you would Google and find that name. Correct. Um, if their privacy settings are correct and the only place they are is on Facebook, and they're like private, will they come up on a Google? Or no. no. So I did this with, um, I've been and interviewed. She doesn't come up, I just Googled her. She has a Facebook or email. But you Googled there. her from your phone or your computer? I Googled her from my phone. Have you ever done it before on your phone? Have I've you ever never Googled, Googled her before. Okay. I don't remember. What's, what name am I Googling? I Googled both Maddie and Madeline Ferguson. M A D E L I N E. Uh -huh. And Ferguson is F E R G U S O N. Facebook. Yeah, but is it her? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what she looks like. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> I didn't get her. I got a dark hair curly person. Oh, yeah, no, I was just curious. Like, I didn't see her. Okay, how old is your daughter? She is 15. This, uh, this girl, the what girl who's come up so far, the first person has straight, long, dark hair. Nope. Okay, that's not her. And you also, you also have to remember that Google searches, Google is a free search engine. Um, so there are paid search engines that will get you a whole lot more information than you can find on Google. But Google is where you start. So, so far, on my two second search on my phone, I didn't well, see her. That was, that was the question, as if they're set as private, Right. Does it make it so that... Well, no, your, your Facebook profile would still come up. I just can't 
and I can go to that page, it won't show that they don't exist. It just, when I click on it, it will say, I'll see the, her banner picture, and it will say, Madeline only shares information with people she knows. Okay. But she'll still so exist. She should show up somewhere. Yes. <laughs> um, so we created, I was interviewed on the largest talk radio show in New York City, and she said, the woman who was interviewing me at the host of that show said, isn't there an app for that? <laughs> and I said, yeah, there's a few, but none of them that would do what I would want as a parent, knowing what I know. And she said, so why don't you make one? I said, that's a really good idea. So this is the home screen of our app, which is technically we changed the name, it's called the Social Media Protector. And what, the way it works is you punch in your kid's name and email, your user, their kid's username and password for Facebook. And every day it will send you, or you tell it every day, every week, however often you want, it will send you a report of every single thing they did on Facebook. Who they posted to, what pictures they did, who they talked to, the direct messages they sent. Wow. So it's not out yet. So well, I'm going to show you how to get it. How, how to get it once we're, we're almost done making it. Um, I changed the name to the social media protector because we're going to do more than just Facebook. We're going to add Twitter. We're going to add a bunch of other social networks. Um, so we've also written a what I call the ultimate guide to protecting your kids on social media. It has the 12 Facebook photos you should delete, the post that should never be there, what to do for college admissions. If you go to our website and fill out this form, we'll let you download it right away as a PDF you can read on your Kindle um, or your iPad. It's ultimatemarketingmagician.com safety. And if you register for that, you'll also get put on the list to get a free copy of the app as soon as we release it, which will hopefully be any day now. Wait, slash safety. And I know you have to go get your kids at Hebrew school. Oh, I get that. Slash safety. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Scary, so worthwhile. Yes, and I will also. We also. Remember what that means. Right, and there will be a different one in two weeks. Um, <laughs> we videotape today's presentation. Once we get the video edited, I will also email that to you as well, so you can watch it with your kids, which might help the conversation as well. Thank you very much.